This is the Southern AF Podcast with your hosts, the Southern Dingo and Mr. Jared Howe. Wait till I die. Lord knows I got pride and I love it. And I love it. Let's go. Break your big to the Cape, Canberra to Samoa. Whites make a place, man, no matter where they go, and I love it. If you cared about free speech, Daily Stormer would still be at DailyStormer.com, right? This Newsweek piece continues. <clears throat> Shut it down! Once again it's on, tie the motherfucking noose. This he will still lying, I'm the motherfucking truth. Unbelievable to what level they can stoop. Even when confronted with an avalanche of proof. They still won't stop. Jews come out of the motherfucking woodwork to defend free speech when there's allegations of child prostitution. Yet if you if you think white people have a right to exist as white people in white countries on Facebook, then you're denied a platform. So show some gratitude, you are my time. The hate mongering, silent control, man. Who I gotta put my foot down? I've done it before, man. Cause self-flagellation ain't part of my pro. As the younger generations become increasingly non-white, they're getting so unintelligent, they literally believe in the flat fucking earth. We need mass deportations now. This intervention isn't going to bridge the gaps in this inequality. It's going to make people starve. It is going to create another Rhodesia. And then these fucking nogs are going to be begging white farmers to come back and grow their food for them. And I ain't like that. Kick the ass out, but they came right back. Just thinking to replace this whole fucking article. Just Ooga Booga gives me that. Fuck all these dindus. But I just smiled, got my head up high. Salute my flag, Lord knows I got pride. Stay on top, Lord knows I'm gonna try. Fight for my people, Lord knows I'm gonna die. If that means hell, Lord knows I'm gonna fry. Woke up this morning, feels good to be white. Can nothing hold us back if we unite. Break your big They're going to be like, oh fucking shit. We made a horrible mistake. Newsweek's gonna gloss right the fuck over that because Newsweek has an anti-white agenda. All the shit you take for granted, cars, clothes, and your phone was probably invented by one of our own, and I love it. After this, I'm gonna go record an episode of the Southern Is Fuck podcast with a Southern Dingo there. And welcome to the Southern AF Podcast. This is episode number 37. And today we have a very special guest, a, uh, a man of, after my own heart. Uh, he, he's, very, uh, he's very, very prolific, very profound. He's got a show called So to Speak. Uh, it's featured on the Daily Stormers website. It's featured on uh, ChristopherCantwell.com. I think he might be syndicated in a couple of other places, but it's a very good show. He, he does this show all by himself. And, and let me just tell you right now, I've tried that. <laughs> It's not fucking easy, and and his show is very entertaining. So uh, I don't know how exactly he he does that, but he was just born with the right stuff, if you will. Then Mr. Jared Howe, thanks for being with us today. How are you doing? Henlo Border Border, thanks for having me. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing good. I actually kind of like Henlo Border. <laughs> we could make something out of that. Henlo Border, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Henlo Border. <laughs> I like. So, man, uh, there's a lot of a lot of interesting stuff going on in the news today. I figured maybe we could broach a little bit of it. Let's uh, do it. It's it's kind of blackpilling. There's a lot of death, but you know, yeah, somebody's got to do it, right? You said we had a uh, um, uh, a truck of peace incident over in the uh, well over across the pond there, right? Yes, we did in the Führer's homeland, you know, itself in Germany. A a nice little what would you call it? A mini bus. It, it plowed into a. Uh, and I guess a little outside dining area full of people eating lunch with their families. And of course the man was mentally ill it has nothing to do with his ethnicity so much so that they didn't even name it. So, yeah. So we've got another truck a piece, uh, uh, you know, uh, incident, the guy's just crazy. And then he kills himself in front of horrified onlookers. We've got, uh, it said, it said several dead and dozens injured. So this will play, you know, we'll get more information as it goes on. But right now I think we kind of have a good idea of what's happening. 
Yeah, I'm looking at a picture of it, and I see a uh, well, I see a lot of broken wood. It looks like most of the chairs and tables were made out of wood. I see a uh, a vehicle in the middle of it all. I'm confused because I thought Germany had pretty tough gun laws, so I'm not too sure on how he was able to get a pistol with which to off himself after doing this. But yeah, you're as as you've said, even even more perplexing is the fact that you can't find any anything about this this gentleman's ethnicity. It's it's a real mystery, isn't it? Yeah, well, I mean, like I said to you before we went live, you know, uh, the, the lack of information is all the information you need. And it's funny how, like, they always, okay, black people in America, they, they have this, this meme, this trope, that whenever white people do something, it gets written off as, oh, he's just mentally disturbed. But, I mean, in Europe, every time I see one of these packies kill some white people, you know, they write it off as a mentally disturbed man, even when he's shouting Allahu Akbar and shit. So mentally disturbed German man, even they'll even they'll even call him German. Like we are the Ger- look at me. We are the Germans now. And yeah, no other yeah information, German no man. Pertinent information couldn't be that he uh, I don't know that he came from an, a country with an average IQ of 69 and real high time preference and real low impulse control. Couldn't be anything like that. That'd be racist to point it out. We wouldn't even I don't think we'd even want to go there. Right. No, I don't. I mean, I, I just lost my, my big YouTube channel a while back. I definitely don't want to broach the ethnicity discussion because I'll lose this one. <laughs> yeah, so it's probably, you know, he, like like uh, Jared said, he's a German man, and you can just ask the government about that. They wrote on a piece of paper that he was German, so he's definitely German, no doubt about it. And he, you know, just yeah. wanted to kill some some people eating lunch. Yeah, it's just a different culture. We have to We have to respect different cultures and ethnicities. It's just a different way of life. It's not he didn't mean anything by it i'm sure yeah he probably thought it was a drive through restaurant you know honestly i don't mean to turn this into an ironic joke that's just like that's the default coping mechanism right because this shit is and we it's awful when we see so much of it in this i guess line of work if you can call it that that it's it's easy to become desensitized to it but i mean this this fucking shit really is awful dude and i really feel for the people who undoubtedly lost his family members in this and although you know some of them are probably supporters of this mass migration too so in one sense it's it's hard for me to be too sympathetic toward the people that supported the invasion in the first place but i don't know that i have enough information to really tell which victims were who so it's just it's overall sad especially since this isn't <clears throat> by any means the only time that this has ever happened and i I don't know about you, but I doubt that this is going to be the last time that it ha- happens too, right? Oh, no, no. I mean, we were overdue for one. I mean, we're really overdue for one in America. So I'm just waiting on that to happen. But see, these things get memory holes so fast. It, it's not even funny. Like that little girl that got run over by the 18-wheeler in Sweden. I don't know if you ever saw those pictures, but I did. And, and, and they're, you know, they're burned in my memory. I mean, she was in multiple pieces, man. It's hard to even talk yeah. about. Yeah, her body like, ripped like in half. Yeah, no. Yeah. yeah, nobody even talks about this shit anymore. So this will be memory hold like the rest of it, but we just, like, that that's in the media's conscience. But we can't let it die in the people's conscience. You know, we have to keep bringing this shit up and showing people, and th- these people need to see the uh, the handiwork of these quote-unquote German people. Right? Well, yeah, and, and the thing is, is if it was Dylan Roof shooting up a church, they'd remind you every fucking chance th- they get mass shooting dylan roof mass shooting dylan roof mass shooting dylan roof and like we let the memory hold this stuff even though we have the internet and we could continually trot it back out for our agenda anytime we need to but we don't and we you're right i think we should more because these images are disturbing right and they it's not it's they're, they're not one-off situations and they're entirely avoidable they're, they're the direct result of what the anti-white left supports in terms of immigration it's not just that they're trying to diversify our cultures or round us up it's that they're bringing in people that are actively hostile to us who if we did this to them you'd never hear the fucking end of it no no you're absolutely right i mean that's that's why that's why we we do hear a lot about dylan roof and then you don't hear hardly anything about the friggin' black guy that went into a white church and killed how many people did he kill i mean he did the same exact thing that but, yeah that was what well, cantwell was in jail and i remember telling him about that and that got memory hold too you're right exact same thing and i it's memory hold to the point where i literally don't even remember the guy's name literally so much of this shit happens that it's hard to keep up with all of it dude well it is yeah and i mean 
for for my show i go through um three times a week and just pick out anti-white stories which include things like this um includes like the the expropriation situation in south africa like the i don't know any any number of situations in in, in america just like this there's so many pieces of anti-white news in the news that you're right it is hard to keep them all straight not just the i mean it's not just like we're dealing with attacks here right we had the attacks to remember but we also have to deal with like the just run-of-the-mill everyday propaganda talking about how the fact that we how white people own land perpetuates inequality like inheritance passing your house to your kids perpetuates inequality and any one instance of it can be it can be tough to remember it's it's almost like you have to have uh, binders full of attacks. Like, what's his name? Romney had binders full of women. You almost have to have binders full of attacks to keep it all straight. And there's a really easy solution to all of this that I think most of the uh, most of the uh, conservatives in the anti-white left don't want to talk about. And you and I both know what it is. And it's it's mass deportations. Yeah, we defending need- our borders. It's ethnic standards for citizenship, right? Yeah, well, we need binders full of deportation orders. Yeah, that's right. So, like, binders I, full of deportees. Yeah, you just reminded me of a really, uh, you know, of a story I wanted to talk about today. I'm glad you brought that up. But before I go into it, I just wanted to read this, the part of this story of the truck, you know, the truck of peace attack news report here. Um, sure. Let's see. Large parts of the city center were sealed off after the attack, and police asked people to stay away from the area. Police made the closures because they were investigating a suspicious object found in the suspect's van. And also, they said that uh, a number of people, witnesses reported that a a number of people fled from the van after the incident. So this van was not, it was not, you know, just one person driving it. A bunch of people took off. Now, if if these people were unsuspecting people, they they wouldn't just take off running, I don't think. I mean, they, they might take off running a block down the road and stay there, but they wouldn't not ever find them. Right. So yeah, it doesn't uh, sound like the suspicious object was a Quran or something. It's <laughs> like it was something. <laughs> it sounds like something yeah. that was maybe thought to be an explosive device. I don't know. Yeah. But. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So there's there's going to be more that comes out on this for sure. I mean, now that that part was, you know, now that now that I saw that part, there'll definitely be more coming out on this. So we will uh, hopefully, you know, there will be people. Other shows will keep you abreast as information comes out. But as of this moment, this is all we've got. Now the story that you reminded me of is uh is that there's this girl all right there's this girl she's like a quarter black and she's on my facebook and she is a shit lib anti-white piece of garbage all right now uh she is on my friends list because we argued one time and she sent me a friend request i'm like well fuck it you know whatever and but here lately this is on my personal account and i just got unbanned and so the only two times i've posted anything she's been right there counter signaling me so i think I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and unfriend this bitch because like i just i can't stand it but what it was was i posted something yesterday and uh, i'm sorry it was the day before yesterday and it was a picture of a bunch of different news headlines like literally 22 or 23 of them uh some of you might have seen the meme go around facebook but it's a bunch of news headlines and they're all anti-white i mean talking about like white people have a violence problem white men and their racism and all this other shit so i posted it and she comments on there. She's like, this is nothing. And two of those aren't even anti-white. They're trying to sympathize with whites. So it's like, this bitch is writing off all of these news headlines, right? She writes them off to, as... trying as, to gaslight you, basically. Exactly. So, don't even worry about it, Goy. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you. Exactly. And so then um, she does that. And then, like, there's this one other girl on there who is, like, halfway trying to wake up to all this shit. And she commented on there. She's like, well, what if it was the other way around, you know? And then this fucking quarter... Uh, Shine is sitting there gaslighting the fuck out of her, and I was like, hey, hang on, hang on, hang on. I was like, don't fucking argue with these people. They hate you. I was like, they hate us, and that's why they're justifying this, while at the same time bitching and moaning about microaggressions and implicit bias, okay? I was like, that's how you know these people are dishonest, and you're not going to get anywhere trying to convince somebody who hates you that they hate you, because the point... No, 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 is, well, you're to do so. Sorry to cut you off, but your attempts to do so are going to be used against you as evidence of your fucking racism. And I don't, I don't think it's any mystery what part of her identity this quadroon identified most strongly with. Right? She could be seventy five percent white, but she's still going to fucking counter signal white people because her blackness is what makes her feel special. 
because she probably has fucking literally nothing else to offer society. But no, you're I, I'm I'm sorry for interrupting me, and I have a really bad problem with that. But no, you're you're absolutely right. All attempts to try to prove that you know you're above the race and racism are going to be used against you as evidence of your racism. That's like the that's the entire point of a Kafka trap. Oh no, yeah, dude, no doubt, no doubt about it. But like the you know I was telling that girl like the whole point is for them to hide the fact that they hate you. So why would you even argue and try to convince somebody who's trying to hide it that they hate you? It's not going to work. And so then like uh, I mean just just yesterday, right? The day after that I post the day after I posted all those news headlines, I posted a, a nice little meme. I don't know who made it, but I found I saw it in one of my the groups I'm in and decided it would be some good propaganda. It is a white woman, blonde hair, blue eyed white woman with like these black hands over her face, like pulling her into the darkness, right? And it all it says is save me or fight for me. I'm sorry. She says fight for me. And I shared it. Well, so the first person that fucking comments on this is guess who? Yeah, the quadroon of of, of uh, a cod there. She decides she's going to fucking, yeah, she's going to fucking comment on this because, you know, oh my God, holy shit, he's white and he's, he's onto us. So she says, this is anti black and gross. And so all I did was say, notice how this fucking woman yesterday so smugly writes off all those news headlines showing that the people in charge fucking hate us. But this here is somehow anti-black, you know, uh, encouraging people to have white babies and not breed yourself into extinction is anti-black. So there was a nice little thread. I think it got like close to 100 comments altogether. But but yeah, she fucking tipped her hand for sure. Oh, I mean, Vice Vice News. Ran a piece, I think, earlier this week when they're talking uh, white Sharia war brides and how wh- white guys on the alt right just want to have white babies and further the white race because they hate black people and other non whites so much. And that's literally literally what they're defining this as if, if you want to continue to exist a boy if, if if you think it's okay for you to have white kids if it's okay f- if you think it's okay for you to be a white person in a white country then you are perpetuating anti-blackness and it's like all right fine fuck it i'm perpetuating anti-blackness and i'm a fucking racist happy you win i don't give a fuck anymore if that's if if that's what it means to be pro me then i don't care right <laughs> fuck it Sorry to, I mean, I don't, I never even asked you ahead of time if swearing was okay on your show. And I'm sorry if it's not. I know some people have a nice, nice, decent church going, church going audiences. And I don't always think to ask. I'm sorry, man. No, dude, that's, uh, I'm, <laughs> if you don't say like nigger, fuck, pussy, or kike at least once a piece on this show, I'm going to be suspect of you. So no, I'm glad that right, I'm yeah. glad you're fine. Go ahead. Sweet. Uh, I am anything but the professional that Jazz Hands McFeels is. I am, uh, I'm working on it, right? But, but uh, we're still not there. It's okay. So it's no big fucking deal. You cuss as much as you like. All right, I don't, I don't feel as bad now. But no, no, you yeah, shouldn't. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, what, what story do we even start off on to get talking about that? About what? Well, whatever we were just. Just talking on. Sorry. I oh <laughs> no, you're fine. Of, lost my train of thought, bro. Yeah, yeah. We were talking about the uh, the Germany bus of peace there, and uh, we've also got a little piece of information here from Mis- Michigan. You know, a nice little heartwarming story of uh, black people actually getting punished. That's right. They killed someone, and they're actually having to face the consequences. Now, you might uh, you might not want them to face consequences, okay? But they are definitely getting. Completely and totally fucked. It's almost too much, if you ask me. But let's get into it a little bit. There were four teens, and they were just teens. All right. Nobody asking any more fucking questions, because Lord knows. Lord fucking knows we don't need to go down this ethnic identity yeah. thing. Four, four they, vibrant youth. <laughs> there we go. We call them. Yeah, yeah. They threw a sandbag off of an overpass, and uh, they killed somebody who was driving under the overpass. Well, they have gotten wrapped up in the legal system, and it's about time they're getting their just desserts. They have been sent to a a, a youth training program. So they're really going to, you know, really so came like, down hard on them. That's like a maximum security prison, right? That's, exa- <laughs> that's exactly what it is. They're not going to be making, it's not like a summer camp where, yeah. they're, where they make pottery or anything. It's maximum security shit, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so like like fucking three by three concrete cell. Steel bars, the the whole nine yards. Yeah, probably not that. It sounds to me like they got a, uh, like you said, a, a day camp as a reward for uh, killing one of their own, 
one of their fellow nogs. You know, if this had been if this had been white people throwing sandbags off a uh, off an overpass, it would have been another Shoa, right? It would have been it would have been black genocide. You said it killed a black guy, right? Yeah, that's that's the only and like you said, uh, you know, I'm going to credit this to you because I didn't come up with this. You said the only reason that they're being punished at all is because they killed a black person. If it had been a white person, I, I'm sure that, you know, they uh, they would have been given an even lighter sentence. Probation. <clears throat> Probation. This is first time offenders, Goy. They didn't do nothing. They didn't do nothing wrong. Just give them a couple weeks probation. No, their their defense would have been a. Uh, their defense would have been we were trying to kill a seal that we thought was crossing the highway you know a sea lion like old fucking jorge what's his nuts and you know that killed kate steinley thought her and her dad were seals is that what he said yeah that was his final defense i thought he he shot the gun on accident or something like maybe that's just what the kikes and the media said like the gun went off accidentally ricocheted no, that, off some something and shot her he he sh- discharged the weapon on purpose because he thought he was shooting as a at a seal you're fucking kidding me right no i'm not kidding at all that was his final defense the one that you named about the accidental discharge that was his like third or second defense he had like four <sighs> different stories yeah For fucks dude yeah so that's yeah, was, that's what we're dealing with here. We're, I mean, no, nothing's anti-white. He was, he was you know? just coming here for a better life, Goy. He was he was just, he was a he was seeking refuge from all the violence down in down there in Mexico, which is totally not a shithole, Tucka. Right? I mean, these narratives they uh, they're hard to keep straight, and they contradict each other quite a bit. That that shitlibs can even manage to like. <clears throat> spew them with a straight face sometimes gives me pause like i'm i'm never shocked by it i guess but it's still it's it's irritating mm, wow so th- so they're going to be sent to uh toledo's lucas county youth treatment center it's a treatment facility for certain services to provide to provide so these boys, wow, this is written by a nigger, apparently. It's a treatment <laughs> facility for certain services to provide so these boys change their behavior and can become productive members of our community. That, oh, God, what a fucking idiot. They'll never be that. Judge Denise Navar Kuban said, I don't know what fucking ethnicity she is, but she's not white. All right. Navar Kuban, give me a fucking break. You said her name is Denise? Judge Denise Navare Kuban. Yeah. Navare Kuban. N a v a r r e. She's C- a fucking. That's a Jew. I, oh, is I'm, it? I, she, they don't have information about her ethnicity, but I'm looking at a picture of her right now. That's a, that's a. I would bet money. That's a Jew. My, my Judar is going crazy right now. Well, you ought to see the fucking lawyer for the for the poor nigger that got killed's family. Her name is Lillian Diallo. D i a l l o. She looks like a fucking animal right out of the zoo dude this was never going to be a fair fight like there's no telling you know the lawyers and everything on the 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 negroes who did the killing side the the quote-unquote teens and then the lawyer who's sitting there trying to defend the family for the of, of the dead guy it's not not even close to a fair fight you ought to look at her she looks retarded her nostrils are bigger than that uh that fucking uh what's his name richard sherman what's what's her name again lillian diallo d-i-a-l-l-o E I A L O O L L O L L O L L O. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus, she, she has off a, the boat, bro. She has a fucking receding hairline, dude. There's so much testosterone in this woman; it's not even funny. Oh no, dude, that's gotta be. It looks like a wig to me. She got like a seven head. It's three, four, five, six, seven head. She doesn't that's even a, have hair. I, that's at least a seven I, head. I, I, would bet money. I bet money that's not real hair. Oh, I see the yeah, judge now. I found now. another picture of her. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, the no. judge is a Jew. She's definitely Jewish, dude. There's no There's way no that doubt. judge isn't Jewish. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. Dude. Yeah, so this this shit is just unreal. You've got shit like the Kate Steinley thing happening. And you've got that. There's that spick in Texas who uh, killed a white person driving. Hey, that motherfucker got let go, too. I mean, if a white person dies, you know, just avert your eyes. Dude, if a nigger at, dies, like, look at I mean, it, yeah. if he had actually been white, and not some Jew with a Hispanic last name, he would have already been arrested. He would have already been blue papered and had it, had his gun taken from him before he shoot up the 
before he showed up to Parkland school, right? But because he had that Jewish ethnicity and Hispanic last name, then all of his crimes were overlooked. And how did that work out for him? How did that work out for his victims, right? But if he had been white, then by all means, just fucking arrest him, Goy. Yeah, dude, there's no doubt about it. This this whole thing is just, it's just fucking, you know, everybody says it all the time, but it's it's worth repeating. It's fucking clown world. It is clown world. But this story, the only thing that I, uh, I think it makes it stick out is that it's like, uh, you know, niggers did it. Niggers uh, died from it. So it's like, okay, where's your loyalty lie? You know, where does it lie? You're going to you're gonna be mad about the nigger death or you're going to fucking uh, let the niggers off. And I'm, well, I'm guessing that's the, that's the thing, too, is if say let's say we're wrong. Let's say that he, let's say his his punishment wouldn't have been lighter if the victim hadn't been black. You still wouldn't have fucking heard about it. Right. If, if the victim had been white, you wouldn't have heard anything about this. No, they yeah. Fucking swept it right under the rug. Yeah, I think you're absolutely fucking right, dude. I mean, that's why that's why like the church thing was memory old. That's why Kate Steinle was. Memory. I mean, people were calling white people racist for being mad about the Kate Steinle decision. It's like somebody just got away with murder. Of course, there are going to be people upset. How could you call them a fucking name for that? Oh, yeah, and they're presenting the fucking guy who shot her as though he was the victim, the victim of all this un this unjust and cruel racism. Oy vey. Like, dude, God, that, that guy is so shady. Dude. Like, I don't know if you saw this or not, but that guy went by four different aliases. Like, it's hard to even Google the fucking guy. You're, you're not going to get the same name every time you Google him because he, he kept having, like, they threw out the trial. They kept finding out, like, okay, this name was an alias. His real name was this. And then, no, wait, that's an alias, too. His real name was this. That happened four fucking times in that trial. He had four names and four defenses. I mean, that's what we're dealing with here, these fucking spicks. Didn't and he, then they get let off. Well, didn't he end up getting arrested for his immigration status after he... No, no, he, he, he pled guilty. He pled guilty to having a weapons charge, but they sentenced him to time served. So he got to walk right out the door. Because he already did it. So fucking stupid, dude. So fucking gay. People, dude, why do we even give them fucking trials? How are they entitled to a, a trial as not even being a citizen in our country? You come in here without fucking papers, four different aliases. You shoot a fucking innocent American. How are you not just shot in the fucking head? I don't understand that by police. Like, what the fuck? I don't, clown, I don't either. Said, clown, clown world. Sorry. I mean, she just fucking pisses me off, dude. Dude, no, it's okay. You're fine. It pisses me the fuck off too. This is insanity. And I mean, it was a. It was, not only was it a white person, it was like a, a beautiful young white girl who hadn't had any kids yet. She had her entire fucking life in front of her, and she died in her dad's arms. Could you imagine the feeling her dad had to have felt? Like he he probably felt so fucking helpless because there was nothing he could do to save her at that point. I honestly, I can't imagine a bigger red pill. That guy is probably going to spend the rest of his life fighting illegal immigration. Now, like, who wouldn't? Right. Like it, it sucks, dude, that, that that happened to him as a father. Like, I can't even fucking imagine, dude. I, I literally can't even imagine. I would I would absolutely lose my shit. Hmm. Yeah, no, I mean, I would, too, man. I just hope that he uh, I hope that he did. I hope that he did wake up to this. I mean, I mean, my God, dude, it's not like we could call it a silver lining. But you would hope that something beneficial, you know, or productive would come out of it. And if he would just wake up to what's happening, that would at least be a tiny bit productive. Yeah, yeah, no, you, exactly. You hope that something beneficial come out of it. The unfortunate part is this is so fucking common, right? That it, like we said before, it's hard to keep track of it all. It's hard to keep checking in on it. It's it's unfortunate that. The government, I mean, I come from like an anarcho-capitalist background, so I understand that the government doesn't really have our back, but it's unfortunate that it doesn't, like that that the victims of taxation, the people that are forced to pay all of the operating costs of the government are never given the protection that they're paying for, that it's always, <clears throat> excuse me, some invader who gets the benefit of those services, right, at the expense of the people that they're harming. It, it is... It's clown world, but it's worse than that. It's it's beyond malicious. I, I would categorize it as evil. So when people say, oh, all these dreamers, all these DACA recipients, they're here through no fault of their own. So you can't hold them responsible. It's like, 
well, hold on. The costs associated with their presence in our country are passed to me through taxation. They're going to be passed to my kids through taxation. If if my kids don't want to pay that when they grow up, <clears throat> what's going to happen to them? What What's going to happen to them if they tell the IRS to go fuck themselves? They're going to get thrown in a fucking cage. If they, if they resist that, they're going to get fucking killed by the government. There's no, there's no sanctuary states for white people who don't want to be forced to pay the cost of importing brown people. So f- don't give me the fucking no fault of their own shit. Don't give me they're just es- fleeing from violence. I don't give a fuck. They're coming here to offset the costs of their preferred lifestyle onto me and my children. And if I don't want that, I'm going to be fucking killed for resisting. My kids will be killed for resisting. So if it's my kids versus their kids, fuck them. I hope the government kills them. That's that's just where I'm coming from, I guess. And that they would expect me to take their side or put their kids above my own or put them before my kids. It's it's total fucking insanity. And if they want to define that, if they want to put, if they want to define me putting my kids ahead of their kids putting my kids before them as racism then i'll take that i don't i've i don't care oh no tell me anything you fucking no you're you're fucking absolutely right it's not like it's not like they don't ask us to choose their fucking kids over ours every day like i can you know one example pops in my head in my mom's neighborhood it's in uh the wealthier area right uh of the of town and they have like a playground they have like a volleyball court that's on it. They have, you know, stuff for smaller kids like slides and swing sets and shit like that. And then for like the teenagers, they have a basketball court. Well, the, the community is not like a gated community. So, I mean, anybody could drive through there. And so, uh, I don't know, maybe this probably been close to a year ago, I guess. Um, I don't really know. I don't have a good sense of time. It could have been three months ago, to be honest with you. There were sure. some niggers that started going over there and started, you know, like from the other side of town to play basketball. Well, then, after a few of them beat the ever-living shit out of one of those little white kids, right, all the all the people in the neighborhood was like, hey, if you don't live in this neighborhood, you don't get to fucking play on these playgrounds anymore. Fuck it. That's, that's our new rule. And so, like, people started, like, you know, staying at the playground like adults. And if they saw somebody that didn't live there, they ran them the fuck off. Now, what do you think happened after that? Oh, of course, some nigger attorney paid a visit to, the, uh, to some of the people who were watching and, and running these little nigglets off, right? Uh, and, like, and she said let me, that let me, was, let me guess he came up and he was like bake the cake faggot essentially and it's like you have to let them play on your playground not to cut you off but no I no can, you, you 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 fucking you hit the nail on the head it was a woman attorney and she was like you know i know some of these boys personally and they're very good boys it's like okay tell that to my fucking kid that still has a black eye from whenever your fucking good boys punched him right in the fucking face he was nine these kids are like 15 16 years old okay Jesus, so fuck. Yeah, so you, that's a perfect example of what you're talking about. And so, like, anybody that thinks that what you just said was extreme, I would ask you to open your fucking eyes and look around because shit like this happens every fucking day. They ask you to choose their kids over our kids every fucking day. Well, that's exactly what the public school system is in any area, right? Like, where I am in Maine, right, there's uh, 20,000 Somalis in the city of Lewiston, which, is, which has a population of 36,000 white people. 20,000 Somalis, none of them, literally zero, own land. All public school. 50% of the kindergarten class in Lewiston right now is fucking Somali. This is in Maine, dude. A a majority white state. This is in Maine, a city in Maine. 50% of the kindergarten first grade class is Somali. This is literally a wealth transfer program to from white landowners to <clears throat> Muslim black welfare shoppers from literally the third world. If that's not putting other people's kids above your own, I don't know what is. Oh, dude, they, I, can, they, I can tell you where that's going. You know where that's going. It's going to be the same argument that they're using in South Africa right now because the white people own all the land. It's repressive. Yeah, well, you wouldn't have this problem if you lived in Somalia, so go the fuck back to Somalia. That's my position. And that's what I keep pushing, dude. And that's why I get frustrated with all these ethno-nationalism debates that happen in blood sports. It's like, well, you shouldn't... (laughs) These liberalists and these faggot libertarians. Not that I'm not... I come from a libertarian background, so I do have libertarian priors. But a lot of these open border type libertarians and the liberalists will say, well, you you can't violate the individual rights of, uh, of these third world invaders or whatever. And it's... 
these people are here on my dime. They're here on my kid's dime. They're here because the government is literally forcing them on me. I'm, I'm forced to include them. I don't understand why I, you know, libertarians and liberta li uh, liberalists and people who are supposedly for individual rights are telling me that I have some sort of moral obligation to live with the consequences of government intervention. Like, you, ha yeah, these people are already here, so you have to live with it in perpetuity. It's like, fucking no, dude. I, I, I don't think I do. And it, I think that's kind of... It's why I'm more like, I don't know, sympathetic to like secessionist movements and political migrations than I am to like cults of personality like Trump's. Like, I didn't think that Trump was going to give us the white nation that we wanted. And I, I, it seems to me like we've, we're literally going to have to take over a state that's already almost 100 percent white and just secede from the nation because we're at the point now if you're a majority white state like maine or new hampshire then membership in the union is a liability the number one source of non-white immigration comes through refugee programs that put you know for example twenty thousand somalis in cities like lewiston that only have thirty six thousand people like that shit's fucking noticeable i went to lewiston yesterday i didn't see a single white person in maine that's the city i was born in dude you know what i mean like it literally breaks my heart. Like I, I, <clears throat> I wanted to leave behind. I wanted to leave behind something that was wasn't entirely different than what I inherited from my parents. I wanted to leave that to my son and to my kids. And I don't think I'm going to have the opportunity to do that now unless something drastic changes and there's mass deportations. I'm literally going to have to engage in a political migration to escape the effects of a political migration. It's well, you said clown world, but it's fuck it. It's way worse than that. Sorry, yeah, man. Rant and, and rant no, and dude. Guard there, but you're fucking. You're like the. You're like one of the best people I've, I. I know it rants. I, I. I love it. You. You feel free to rant anytime you want, <laughs> but like, dude, no, you're absolutely right. And this is insanity. And but the thing is, like, I think about how we're going to solve this. And I mean, maybe six or eight months ago. Like, I, I would have had a good answer for you, man. But there's been so much shit going on lately. I, I don't know about you, but it's fucked my head up. I mean, my, my thought process is clouded now because there's been so much stuff introduced that, uh, that, that wasn't originally on the docket. Some of it warranted, some of it not. That I'm really not, I don't, I don't really know how to go about this anymore. And like, there's this thing that uh, some people, huh? What do you mean? Well, like, uh, okay, here's, here's one that's warranted. All right. For instance. Like I used to think that, and this was a while back, I used to think that things would get so bad that white people would wake up and then we would just ship these motherfuckers out of the country. But then you, you look around and look at South Africa, okay? Those white people are not waking up. Oh, the majority of them are still shit libs who think that this is all about inclusivity, right? But that it shows you just that just how much people can get, can get used to or just how much white people will get used to if it's brought upon them rather slowly, if there was ever anything that would trigger an uprising, I would think it would be what's happening in South Africa. So, you know, uh, what is it called? Uh, oh, God, I can't. Accelerationism is not the way to go. I, I don't think it's the way to go. I don't think it's going to get bad enough that white people go, fuck it. You know, let's just get rid of these motherfuckers because, like I said, South Africa. Right. So that's that's not one unwarranted like the whole fucking uh, optics thing. I think that that is all but killed this fucking movement. Oh. Uh, some of some of that even is warranted, but the insane hyper focus on everything has done nothing but create a divide. So I mean that's what I'm saying. Like, uh, it's hard to even fucking think clear anymore because you got so many different people drawing well, lines that some are wanting thing. to come on. The optics thing kind of pre it presupposes that there's something that our movement could have done differently to have a different outcome than what we have now, and I don't I don't actually think that's the case. And not to be like, like about it or nihilistic about it, because I'm not either, either of those things, but I just think that we haven't gotten to the point yet where we've given white people the moral certainty they need to take their own side. <clears throat> so it doesn't matter what our optics would have been. It doesn't matter what our strategy would have, would have been. It doesn't matter if we would have had a thousand rallies or no rallies at all. I think at the end of the day, it's not at the point where white people have the moral certainty to take their own side. 
I don't think there's anything that anybody in this movement or any, you know, even if you don't consider yourself part of a movement, I don't think there's anything that anybody who's pro-white already could have done to make things different now other than keep, you know, I think we do need to keep doing what we're doing. I think we do need trying, we do need to keep trying to appeal to white people who already understand why it's important to have white countries and just provide them with a little push the, you know, the pushes that they need to get to the point where they can brazenly be like, I'm pro white, because I don't know if it necessarily helps us to have, <clears throat> you know, uh, 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 a legion of anonymous shit posters. I, I am also not necessarily sure it helps us to have a legion of people who are willing to go out and do real life activism at rallies. But I, one thing that does help us more than anonymity or rallies, I think is, <clears throat> Having your identity known, like if people, know, <clears throat> excuse me, if people know who you are and that doesn't inter interfere with your ability to provide for yourself and your family, if you were able to present your ideas on race realism and be pro-white and be against this forced invasion without it getting you driven out of polite society, that's infinitely more inspiring and valuable to the people around you than protecting the anonymity of people who for whatever reason would get fired from their jobs or you know would face consequences if people knew who they really were because at the end of the day if we can't be who we are out in the open if we can't be openly pro-white if we can't be openly on our own side then everything we're doing is for naught like this this optics debate and the idea of optics all presupposes that we can't present who we really are to people Right. We can't be openly pro white because then people won't like that. And it's like, who are we trying to appeal to that aren't comfortable with the idea of being openly pro white? Certainly not white people. And even if it was, it's going to be fucking shit, shit lib leftists. Right. So, yeah. I mean, I, know, I think there is like a, I think that people on both sides of the optics argument, there, what, what, what I see is on both sides, they're making a simplistic argument. Both sides are. And that it's very important to remember that both sides are doing it. Right there, there is something to all of us not carrying swastikas and all this and, and giving Roman sure. salutes during rallies. Sure. Oh, that of of course there is, and I think most people know that, right? But there's also something to be said about like not getting too far into this ideology of if we do this, then we will be respected. That's not how it works. Yeah, uh, it's always going to happen. It's yeah, it's, how it's, gonna it's happen. never been how it works. So we can't use that statement to keep from doing everything. So like that statement should keep us from marching with swastika and goose stepping down the highway uh that should keep us from doing that but it should not keep us from doing things that we were doing just a year ago and, and nobody thought about i mean like it, there's a, there's been this idea introduced that it's bad to do this and this and this or some of these things they're naming that we shouldn't do anymore are the reason we're here or the i mean we were on the cusp of something i feel like and it was snatched away from us and, and now we're all arguing amongst ourselves over stupid fucking shit well and people were making those arguments that you shouldn't be doing those things at the time too and they were completely disregarded so now for people who were you know at the forefront of being of advocating you'll be as extreme as possible because it doesn't matter anyway you're now saying oh let's be reserved let's watch our optics it's kind of hard to take seriously too i mean for me yeah i mean yeah i feel you and like the thing you said about the anonymity like I'm kind of sympathetic to to that because, like, I have to – I got to be honest with you here. Like, I was fired from my job for using my real name. I mean, taken up for a 16-year-old who got beat up by two grown black adult women. And who who would think that would get you fucking canned? But it did, and it threw my right, life yeah. into a downward spiral. So, like, I've got some I've got some sympathy for, you know, people who, who, who want to remain anonymous and this and that. But, like, the only thing is those people shouldn't be – feeling like they're on a separate team from the people who are not anonymous and who do use their name and say this and that. So like we're all on the same well, fucking just side to be, here. Just to be clear too, I'm not even necessarily bashing anonymity. I'm just saying that it's not a sacred thing and it, and it sucks. That threat is real for a lot of people. And I'm not saying that it's a personal uh, shortcoming of yours to get fired for, from your job because you used your real name. I'm just saying that, in the instances where you can use your real name and not get fired and not face those type of uh, repercussions, it does serve to be an inspiration to other people. I'm, not, I'm I'm certainly not saying that anonymity is not important for a lot of people. I'm just saying that it's 
maybe not as important as being an example of someone who doesn't need it. I don't know. And, and I, I'm not just saying that because I'm somebody who operates under my real name. I'm saying that because I want pro white people to be pro white people in public without having to fear uh, repercussions. And part of it, I think part of the fear of losing one's an anonymity and the consequences that come with it to some degree, I think it's a self-fulfilling prophecy because everybody you know, there's so many people that rely on the anonymity, right? And if all everybody who is anonymous suddenly came out of the shadows and they were like, I'm pro white, this is who I am, this is me, you'd realize that's like a very large portion of society. And you can't just ostracize this large a portion of society at the same time. However, if we wait 20, 30 years at the current trajectory and we're a minority in America and then we come out and do it, then it might be a different story, right? We might. At that point, we might be so outnumbered that it, it wouldn't really matter either way. So I think, to, to I, I think times of the essence, man. I I know a lot of people depend on their not anonymity, but I at the same time want to try to be at least for me personally fostering an environment where people don't have to rely on it. No, I mean you're. I, I think you're right that we we that's where we have to end up. I mean if we if we want to change anything, I mean it has to be done by people who. Are out there in the open there's no doubt about it how we get there like like i said that's kind of my the thing that i've just my mind's been clouded on there's so many things to think about because there's been so many things introduced by different people and to be quite honest with you i'm not even sure uh i, I know that some of these people i know that some people saying some of these things are not to be trusted i just don't know how far like that goes you know and, and let me just say this and throw this out there for you real fucking quick the, the people at TRS, like Mike and Sven and, and J.O. and Alex, the people who lead that organization, they've they've always done what they said they wanted to do. They haven't changed their stance on anything, really. I mean, they, they, they do stay out of this infighting and this and that. And there's some people who ask me on Facebook and Gab, like, well, why didn't they comment on the, you know, uh, we've calling Cantwell a Fed thing, but they did comment on this doxing thing. And, and the, I would say to you, all right. That the reason they commented on A, but not B, or B, but not A, is because this, you know, the doxing thing, okay, it is getting out of hand. Let me just, like, what people are saying about it. And if if that's if that takes off, if that catches on, it's okay to dox anybody to the left of me, which is what I saw one guy on fucking Facebook and Gab say, and he's got a pretty big platform. Um, I say platform, he's just got a lot of followers. That's dangerous, okay? You can't just go doxing anybody to the left of you. That's retarded. We need people on all spectrums of the right doing what they're doing. Now, having said that, okay, those people who are to the left of these people, they don't need to be throwing rocks at the people on the farther right either. We have all got to fucking realize that we need each other. We're not, we're not going to make this with people on the super far right alone, and we're damn sure not going to make it with people closer to the center alone. So this... this the only thing I guess I'm really getting at here is there doesn't have to be fucking fighting about this. And so, like, if, if, if this doxing thing were to catch off, catch on, I think it would kill the entire fucking movement, dude. Because, like, a lot of people don't do stuff. They don't use their real name or, or they don't go to rallies or whatever because they're scared of Antifa doxing them. Now, imagine those people, you know, what they what would they do if they had to worry about getting doxed from the left and the fucking right? We, we can't we can't act like that's something that needs to catch on. Because it doesn't, it is very dangerous. But at, like I said, at the same time, these other people closer to the center, they absolutely need to stop making everybody on the farther right than their, their fucking enemy. Stop slandering them. Stop making up new terms for them. Right? I mean, like that's what the fucking Democrats do. They call us racist and and bigots. I mean, you're you can't just fucking make another name for people farther right than you and start calling them that. I mean, you're you're drawing lines in the fucking sand that you can't undraw. You know, this this infighting shit will kill us before anything else will. So it just has to fucking stop. And, and it's really, really just it makes me really mad. But I think the only thing we can really do is kind of what TRS has always said that they wanted to do. Stay out of it. And because if we stay out of it, we're not giving these fucking people the attention that they're so desiring. And that's the only way to beat them in my in my eyes. Yeah, um, I mean, if that's. I'm not, I don't know anybody really that close, I like really that well in TRS. I'm not on like talking terms 
like I, I just don't talk to Mike's fan, Alex or Jo or really all that often. <clears throat> I think the only one I've actually even talked to is Mike. So I don't if, if that's where they stand and staying out of it. I think then that's I think that's good. You know, I don't think that these divisions should, should be exacerbated or encouraged, really. I, and I think you're right. I think that this doxing thing, if you have to be worried from be, about being doxed by people on the right and being doxed by people on the left, then I, I do think it's going to deter in, in the movement. Um, at the same time, though, I would say that I don't know that I would necessarily subscribe to like a universal principle called do not dox or a universal principle called free speech or anything like that because i don't know i've heard i've heard mike uh mike enoch say this himself that it's not you're not really adhering to a principle if you extend the protections of the principle to people who reject it so if if you have somebody who is willing to dox people or if you have somebody who is going out of their way to i you know build a database of identities of anonymous people, then I don't know if that person has any reasonable expectation to anonymity. And in the same sense, I use the same arguments for, um, for communists, right. Who reject the libertarian private property norm. Like if you reject private property, like the idea of private property and the non-aggression principle, then I just wouldn't extend the protections of private property and the non-aggression principle to you. I don't believe in these, these inalienable universal rights or standards. I believe in reciprocal rights. And it's like, if you're going to extend free speech to me, then I'll extend free speech to you. If you're not going to dox me, then I won't dox you. If you're not going to dox my allies, then I won't dox you or your allies. Right. But as soon as you, as soon as you demonstrate a willingness to go over the boundary there, I don't think that we should hold ourselves to a standard that says we can't reciprocate, even if that person is on our side, because at the end of the day, there's, you know, by what you said, no real justification for initiating such a conflict. Well, no, I mean, I think there's definitely something to what you just said. There's no doubt about it. And, and this, this situation with uh, the guy that got docs, right? It's, it's, Oh God, I don't know. I don't really know how to say this, but it's not as it's not as black and white as it looks on the on the surface, right? As the people trying to use it to divide us would like you to think it is. But like the the thing I'm really speaking on here is the principle in itself that I see people running with. Because like I said, the people using it to divide us want you to think it's black and white, and well, that's making two that opposite dox, sides. The idea that you should be able to dox anybody to the left of you, I think you're right. That's that. That's really short-sighted and honestly fucking retarded. Like, there's people that exempt themselves from being able to appeal to thou shall not dox in their own defense, but that does not mean that you should dox anybody to your left. That would be a very, very bad idea. Exactly, exactly. And that's that's the two sides that are taking off here. One side is, like, there is absolutely, no, under no circumstance, any situation where you should ever dox anybody who's not an Antifa faggot, period. Well, dude, like there's nothing in the universe that's that black and white. And at the same time, the other side is, okay, yeah, uh, if they're not, if they're to the left of me, well, then I'm not, I'm not punching right, so I can dox them. That is fucking retarded too. That's just as black and white and retarded. So, like, if if there were a hypothetical situation, right, where somebody on the right, we found out for sure. Let's say we just heard them on tape saying, like, oh yeah, I'm actually Antifa, but I'm pretending to be this guy, which. I, I don't, I, it's never happened. I'm just making this shit up right now. Then, yeah, you could fucking, you, you, you need to dox them. There's no doubt about it, right? But at the same time, like somebody who's like, oh, this guy's a little bit to the left of me. I want to dox him. That is unjustified, like, and you should be booted from the movement. If you've got like a Mr. Medic or something, like he might not be all the way all right, but there's like no reason to dox that guy, for example, right? Like, what's it going to benefit you to dox someone who's anti immigration? just because he's not explicitly pro white right like it just well, he's not giving us a bad name he's not throwing right, he's not yeah. spitting his venom at us that's that's really the thing it's like you have to take into account i guess what i'm saying you have to really take into account who is starting fights who is fucking who who is causing a bunch of divisions and there's a very high threshold here okay to the point where you need to fucking uh, dock somebody extremely high threshold I can't really say that enough. So for the most like a high, a high burden of proof for why it's necessary is what you're saying, right? Exactly. So like there is something, you know, to 
to be said about the people who are like, you never duck, you never, because 99% of the time, that is absolutely the case. But there's just this, this, it's just dangerous, I think, to say that like, oh yeah, it's okay to dox this person because he's on my left. And that's the easy, that's the reasoning some people are, are using on Gab and, and, and Facebook well, the, and Twitter and shit. And it makes uh, it especially dangerous, not to interrupt, but some people perceive themselves as being as far right as it gets. So if you see yourself as being the most far right guy out there, then by that argument, it's okay for you to dox literally anybody, right? Well, no, exactly. I mean, that, it's a very simple minded approach and it's, that's the danger of drawing these hard fucking lines in the sand because most people are not going to go with some nuanced argument. They're going to go with the simplest, quickest way to uh, to make that argument, and that's the way to do it. Oh, they're to my left. I want to dox them. Well, let me just tell you a quick little story here. There's some fucking guys that I'm going to be on a YouTube stream tomorrow debating who, in, in a stream on YouTube, and it's, it doesn't even have fucking like 50 or 60 views, so these people aren't big, but uh, I feel like I need to squash them before they do get big and humiliate them, so I'm going to do that. But they, they were talking about how they were going to hang me and fucking, you know, put me in front of a firing squad and put me in an oven because I was on a stream where there was a, a half Jew. And the, the guy's name is actually, he has a YouTube channel. It's called Jews for Hitler. And the dude talks like you and I would. <laughs> yeah, his dad, his, his dad was a, uh, his dad was a Russian Jew. And his mom is like some, you know, some white woman from Canada. And he's done his DNA test and he's like 30%. Jewish is what it came up, but like the dude hates Jews, right? He hates Jews, and he's the only person like that I've ever met in my entire life. And so, like, they wanted to hang me and throw me in an oven because I what shared a platform with the guy. I mean, it's not like I fucking had him on my show. It's not like I linked to any of his shit. It's not like I promoted it. But it's just not like be. You a, it's not like you gave him a bedroom in your house. It's not like you invited him into your neighborhood or your state or your community or something like that. You had a fucking conversation with him over the internet well it was like it was like seven people on the stream and he was just happened to be on there and these fucking guys think that now they think they're farther to the right than me so they're gonna hang me shoot me and fucking burn me so like by this logic they would no doubt have just be justified to to dox me well that that's fucking no of course they don't have a fucking justification to dox me those people are causing trouble they're only causing trouble and i see no reason to not be suspect of them like you would somebody closer to the center causing fights too, right? You have to be suspect of all these people whenever the, who take actions that draw hard lines in this movement over shit like this. Anytime there's hard lines drawn like this, you really need to fucking like jump into it and get all the information you can. And, and let's not like make it a priority to take sides, get information first. The only real hard line there ever should have been, I think is, are you pro-white? Are you anti-immigration? Right. Like, I don't know. It, it seems to me like beyond that is if we can solve the fucking immigration problem, if we can get whites to the point where they're standing up for themselves on a racial basis and be pro-white, it seems like these nuanced disagreements with, between people shouldn't fucking matter at all. And yet people want to, it's not just enough to be pro-white. It's not just to be enough to be anti-immigrant. You also have to be you also have to be completely intolerant of even talking to every single Jew. You also have to uh, <clears throat> know the memes that I know. You have to keep up on all the edgy memes. You also have to goose step. You also have to have an armband. And at a certain point, it becomes like, okay, uh, at what? Why? Why isn't just being pro-white good enough for you? What? Why isn't me supporting in a white ethno nation good enough for you? Because that's what this was supposed to all be about, right? Is having uh, a white homeland for white people where white white people could be white people and preserve a future for ourselves and for our children. And But now we say, okay, I'll concede to all that, but I don't agree with you on optics or I don't agree with you on ovening people who are willing to have discussion with discussions with Jews who ate Jews. At that point, it becomes, okay, you're not just looking for a white nation. You're looking to just start shit or start shit between white people. It's like, <clears throat> if that was your goal, if having a pro-white future where people, white people could stand up for themselves in those explicit terms and having a white homeland, how does attacking pro-white people bring you closer to that goal? I would submit that it never does ever. No, yeah, I agree. And I, I think the two things you named, are you pro-white, are you anti-immigration? Those are... Those are very good, like, uh, me you know, measuring tools to see if they're on our side. And the third one, I do believe, is like, 
do they fucking sling shit at people farther right than them? Or do, do you they, have do they group, sling? Do you have in group preference, right? Do you do you have more loyalty to your in group than you do to your out group? And you and if you're someone who is gonna spend fucking not let you know. Let your time be completely monopolized by punching toward people who agree with you but are more popular than you, then you're not really helping, right? Well, yeah, I mean, and I think I think that goes the other way too. Like, are they, I said, are they slinging shit at people farther right than them? Or if you're real far right, are you slinging shit at people who are like kind of, you know, the Jared Taylor types and this and that? That is, that is what I use to base, are these yeah, people serious or not? Either. Yeah, so like there, there should be no shit slinging on the right at all. And and there's somebody in the chat here. I don't fucking remember his name is something Wake. It just Wake. He said that the people we're live right, right now. Are you serious? We got a chat oh, and everything. I didn't even know that. I wasn't paying attention. Oh shit! Yeah, I'm sorry, dude. Yeah, we're live. But but he, <laughs> he said uh, he, he said uh, he said people on the far right need to realize like that the Jared Taylor types are gonna have to disavow them. I completely disagree with you. I'm sorry. I've never seen Hillary Clinton disavow fucking communists. And we don't have to do this whole disavow thing. If, if it's okay to disavow people farther right than you, then you're going to have a real hard time making a fucking argument to the far right that it's, it's not okay to sling shit at the people closer to the middle. That right there is just a fucking, I mean, oh my God, dude, that is opening up a can of worms there. And then there's another person in the chat, Kim. She's been here a long time, and, and I see that somebody has been filling her head with bullshit she says, uh, oh, my God, so Jeff's still siding with Neelan and Cantwell on this. Cam, let me just go ahead and give you my full-on fucking opinion on this, all right? No, I'm not, because I'm not sure Ricky Vaughn should have been doxxed, all right? I'm just going to lay it out there for you, honestly. I am not positive that he is the fucking, you know, uh, shit-starting on purpose worm that a lot of people think he is. I'm not sure. Do I, do I think that, that he was doing a lot of damage? Yeah. Yeah, I do. But I don't know that he was doing it on purpose. I honestly don't. It might have been ego. And I think that the fact that he was doxxed has spurred so much shit of these people saying, like, oh, it's okay to dox him because he was on the left. He was close to the center. That is to that to me is more dangerous than what some of the shit he was stirring up. Now, all I'm trying to say here, Kim, is that were we to find out that he was doing this on purpose? then, yeah, you can't use the you should never dox anybody thing. But in my humble opinion, I'm not a fucking genius, but I just don't see the evidence that he was doing this on purpose or he couldn't have been reasoned with or, or anything like that. I'm not sure about that. So, no, I don't think he should have been doxed, Kim, okay? If that makes you feel – and I, I know exactly who's been telling you that. And you need to stop listening to the motherfucker because he's – you know, we'll go into – I'll go into this a little bit more. After Jared has to dip out, because I don't want him to feel like he uh, he has to comment on on this whole thing. Yeah, I mean, we're right, but, we're right at that point now anyway, but now we're in. I mean, it's, I don't know. I don't want to blow up your spot and by really weighing in heavily on this, because... No, feel free, dude. Feel free. You say whatever you want. I mean, people probably know I'm, I'm pretty, good for, pretty good friends with Christopher Cantwell. The thing that bums me out is people blame Cantwell for all this. Cantwell, Cantwell didn't dox Ricky Vaughn. Paul Nealon dropped Ricky Vaughn's docs. Cantwell happened to interview Paul Nealon to talk about it, but it wasn't Cantwell that docs Ricky Vaughn. So it kind of pisses me off that people spread that bit of misinformation and say that Cantwell is responsible, and it's really not Cantwell at all. <clears throat> but then the other thing is, is just the line of business that he was involved involved in in general was, I mean using facial recognition technology to identify anons online and provide lists to political candidates. I'm not, I, I don't agree with that, but it's not my intention right now to like offer a condemnation of it. I'm just saying that that practice in general, in general, in my mind would exempt him from having any appeal to anonymity whatsoever. I, I don't even consider what happened to him a dox per se it's not like every little bit of information about him was released it was just his name and he's made that available to a lot of different people so i don't know i uh i i've never followed the guy up until he appeared on and I, actually I, I, i've never followed the guy the only the only time i've ever heard of him is when he appeared on fash the nation once and when he appeared on cantwell show once it never I never understood why so many people were willing to draw lines in the sand over this, but it seems kind of dumb to me in general. You know what I mean? And I don't know. I, I, I'm i not siding with Ricky Vaughn because I barely have any idea who he is. Can't, Christopher Cantwell is my friend. 
Like I helped him get out of jail. Like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what people are really expecting from me. I'm just, I put the facts together. I see the, the facial recognition thing and the services he was offering to Neilan. And I have a problem <clears throat> understanding why anybody thinks he would have any right to anonymity whatsoever. I don't, I don't believe, like I said, in these inalienable universal rights, like liberalists do. If you, if you make your money by revealing the identities of people on, on your side to politicians who want them to vote for them, then I don't know that you have an expectation to anonymity, but I don't expect you, um, Jeff, I don't expect you to take my side on that. I don't expect your listeners to take my side on that. And the last thing I want would be for you to get kicked off of TRS or the Daily Stormer over it because I think that would, I think it's just stupid. I think. Well, dude, I've never been on the Daily Stormer. Like, uh, I talked to Anglin like one time and uh, he, he told me that the show wasn't professional enough to be on there. And that's fine. I didn't fucking make a big deal about it. Like, it, it might not be professional enough to be on there. That's fine. But like, uh, I, I do not, I do not think that uh, TRS or Mike and Sven would, would like kick me off because of one of the p opinions of my guests that I, that I'm not even endorsing here. You know, like, uh, I, I don't think I they're those kind of guys. I think it'd be a shame. I think it's good to have voices like yours out in the world being heard. I think it only helps us. And I don't know if it necessarily helps us to draw these hard lines in the sand over what I think are very valid criticisms of a semi-anonymous figure who was only ever punching right. That's, my perception of it i didn't see him really hitting the left too hard the i've had one interaction with him myself and he was counter signaling me during that interaction so it's like that that people would ask me to decide with somebody above my friend chris it's not does first of all doesn't seem reasonable to me but then even just the facts the facts of the situation don't really add up right it's like i don't know if yeah. if it's if we're if we're even if you believe in a universal sense of thou shall not dox, it becomes okay. Well, why was this why was this guy using facial recognition technology to identify anons and provide lists of their names to politicians? Right. Well, it kind of you have to also you have to also remember that it was a far right politician he was sitting there working with. You know, I mean, you have to take that into account. Uh, we don't we don't have any kind of even even the uh, accusation that he was doing this for politicians who would send us down the river. And at the time. A lot of people, including myself, thought Paul Nealon was like the the prototype of the new uh, heroic politician. And he's I, I don't really know what's happening with the guy, but he, he's I, I, trust me, I'm the last person who wants to say this, but he's kind of fucking going off the rails here. OK, I defended him whenever Spencer criticized him and said he shouldn't name the Jew. Right. I think that was a retarded thing to say by Spencer. But like, I mean, dude, he he single handedly by doing what he did, he single handedly helped those people that I was talking about earlier, who calls a lot of infighting from the center, he single-handedly did exactly what they did. And he fucking calls the shitload on, there on his own, and he gave them a perfect excuse to, to run with this narrative of, uh, you know, like, oh, you, you never dox no matter what, which I think is just as, just as dangerous, or maybe just a little less dangerous than people on the far right saying, oh, you dox anybody to the left of you. That, is, that whole discussion is up because of what Paul Nealon did. And like I said, man, it's just that there is there is some uh, there's some stuff that that whole facial recognition thing. It sounds it sounds weird to me, you know, but like I said, you have to look at who he was, who he's offering it to. And we haven't heard we haven't really heard like what he says about it. Right? We all, only thing we heard about it. The only person we heard about it from was Neilan, who we know absolutely fucking hates the guy. Yeah, there's so, been like, some things that Neilan's done recently that I don't necessarily agree with, like lashing out at Jared Taylor. I didn't particularly agree with right and yeah yeah i don't i i, I don't necessarily know <clears throat> i don't know that he's going off the rails per se i guess i guess so, some criticism that i haven't heard anybody think to bring up at all is that neilan probably knew what these services were before he gave ricky vaughn a test run on his social media accounts like he knew all this and then let him try it out and he only ostracized him and doxed him after after he had told Ricky Vaughn that he wasn't going to hire him because it didn't work out. And only after Ricky Vaughn went on a podcast to talk shit about his campaign finances and like all of it's fucking I guess there's fault on both sides, honestly, but I don't know. I don't know what else to say about it, dude. It's I don't I we need pro white politicians. I know that people complain about. You know, we're not doing enough in the streets. We're not. We're not doing enough direct action. Well, fucking 
political engagements one of the most effective things you can do if you can actually get in there and do it right and if you're going to attack the only pro-white politicians despite their shortcomings then maybe you're not going to get a political solution is me is my takeaway i don't my head has kind of been reeling from this whole thing to be honest with you i listened to um i listened to hunter wallace on cantwell last night and walked away from it thinking i don't know what to fucking think honestly but Cantwell's my friend. I've never had any particular alliance to Ricky Vaughn. My entire experience of him has just been punching right, even punching at me in the only time that I ever interacted with him directly. Um, I don't know. I, I feel like fucking we'll all be better off once we just memory hold this. I don't know what yeah, else. Yeah, dude. No, I, I listen I, about Cantwell. Like, there's no, there's been no secret, right? That I am a huge fan of Cantwell, and and I. I'm just going to tell you my honest opinion. I think Cantwell has gotten roped in to this black and white argument that we were talking about earlier. And I, I don't, he didn't create this argument. Okay. Like you said, he didn't fucking dox Ricky Vaughn. He, he got roped into it because there were sides made and he took a different side than a lot of people are taking. But ha had that never happened, right? Like ha had, the, had Neela never doxed this guy and had this guy not spent months talking shit about us, this never would have happened. Right. I mean, he, he never would have had to take a fucking side. Now, I'm just saying here that I don't think that Cantwell has done anything that that we need to put him in the category of like fucking, you know, a suspicious person or something like like some people are saying on Gab. That is insanity to me. There are suspicious people. There are people who you need to look at and see what their actions have done. But Cantwell has really not done anything other than take take sides on this thing. It might not be the side that you want to take, but he's not been the instigator you know, of, uh, of these sides that have been drawn, these lines that have been drawn here. Uh, so I, I, I'm with you. I don't, I don't want to fucking throw Cantwell under the bus and I'm not going to. Well, yeah, not only am I not going to throw him under the bus, I'm <clears throat> going to go a step further and defend him. Like for the people that are calling Cantwell a federal informant, that's, <laughs> that's flagrant bullshit. That's patent bullshit. I took Cantwell's calls personally myself every day while he was in jail in Albemarle County. Like if through the inmate phone system, he's not a he's not a federal informant. Oh, that's another and, that's another that's another uh, hard black and white line that was drawn. Like, oh you never, ever, ever under any circumstances, no matter what, in this entire universe, there will never be a situation where you give any kind of information to a federal agent. That yeah. is fucking retarded. No, that's stupid. My whole if you listen to my show, so to speak, the very beginning of my show, the every single show Oh, Hans Hermann Hoppe quote, crush the anti-fascist mob. There's nothing I want more than the fucking state for the police, the feds to come down on Antifa. Nothing I'd like more for that than to happen. It's like, why are you going to protect your enemies from being crushed by the feds? If somebody on your side has information that's going to result in the federal government, full force of the federal government coming down on your enemies, your anti-white enemies who want you fucking dead. Why would you counter signal that person? It makes no fucking sense to me. No, exactly. I, if I had that information, I would not hesitate to provide it. It's not like Cantwell's going out of his way to make up information about people in the white nationalist movement so that they get arrested. If he was going to do that, it would be very stupid for him to have announced it to Weave and everybody that listens to his show, right? No, he's what he's doing is he's providing information about anti-white communists who want us dead he's providing information about their crimes to law enforcement so that hopefully something fucking happens so that we don't find ourselves in these powerless situations where we're just praying and hoping that we see something happen no you talk about like direct action and wanting shit to happen well cantwell's making it fucking happen he put a lot on the line he by the time he's all done with this assuming assuming he gets exonerated it's a year of his life gone a lot of you won't even fucking sacrifice 10 minutes. Most of you won't even sacrifice an hour a week. You know what I mean? Like if you want to, if you want to say you sit there and stand behind some anonymous shit poster and I, in, in, inside with him and make, make that guy, the guy you're going to side with no matter what, he's our only hope. Then fine. I guess if that's what you want to do, but I don't know. I think Cantwell has, and, and I'm saying this as somebody who did not side with TWP. I did not side with Matt Heimbach or TWP. I actually debated Matt Heimbach the day before he was arrested for all that shit. And he was trying to argue to me that 
white people. You should use force against white people to prevent them from seceding f from other white people. And I said, would you use force to prevent your wife from divorcing you? And yeah, apparently Holy you, shit, you, you did say that. I remember <laughs> that. Holy fucking shit. Yeah. You were, you're like a fucking psychic dude. Yeah, dude. I didn't, I felt bad about that afterward. If I knew that was going to happen, I wouldn't impress him so hard because it didn't end up looking that good for him. But this, I, I'm just saying, I'm speaking to somebody who was not on the side of TWP. Cantwell is doing what is necessary to try to defeat our enemies. He's done more than a lot of people. He sacrificed more than a lot of people. Even if he had been exonerated when they released him from jail, even if that had been the end of it, he still would have done more than most people at that point. But he's going to go a whole entire year paying rent at his other apartment in New Hampshire that he doesn't even get to be at, paying all those expenses, paying all these bills, paying... Uh, the legal fees associated with it. And people say, oh, Daily Stormer got you so much money. And it's true. Daily Stormer and TRS were fucking critical. They were key to helping Cantwell raise those funds. I'm not going to lie about that, but they covered only his bail. It's not like all of his funds have been paid. It's not like this hasn't cut into his personal finances at all. This guy has sacrificed a lot, more than most people would ever be willing to. I'm not going to just fucking throw him under the bus because of some anon troll who wouldn't show up in person to anything is mad at him you know what i mean it makes no fucking sense to me no i, I listen i agree and i think that all the a lot of the criticism that's been laid at cantwell has been because other people decided to make decisions that you know the the uh the outcome of those decisions or whatever those words whatever they said were hard lines being drawn right like cantwell talked to you i remember hearing on when he was talking to you on the phone from live from seg that he was, he was, he couldn't wait to talk to the feds and tell them who some of these people were. Nobody fucking like had some outrage at that point, right? We it was not an. That. Yeah, we talked about that online from Seg. We were talking about how a federal, an FBI agent came in and was like interviewing him with his attorney because they were, in, uh, they were investigating something else to do with Antifa. We've been, we were, we we disclosed yeah. that months ago, dude. That was just yeah, you, you have to in November, December. Yeah, so people like you know people who were who were taking this hardline stance like oh you never ever ever talk to feds and I'm like never there's not a single you know thing in the universe that could happen that would mean that Cantwell what he's doing is anything other than a federal informant now I mean like you have to you have to ask yourself why was that made the central piece of this whole thing like why why did you start having that idea maybe because you read it somewhere or you fucking heard somebody tweet it out like you didn't freak the fuck out whenever he said that on live from saying and i know a lot of people were listening to that it was only until some some people whoever it was i don't know to be quite honest i don't know where it came from made it a big deal and then you're like oh yeah well, fuck me that. that's bad i don't i don't know who's responsible either but i will say this is that cantwell and i both come from the libertarian movement and that was something that was commonly thrown at him in the libertarian movement too you're a fed you're a fed and people were trying constantly trying to expose him as a, as a fed and you start to see like all these same screenshots of you know the the thing that he published i guess is an april fool's joke laying naked in a bed with a, a fucking v for vendetta mask over his cock and balls there like people will spread that picture to like try to discredit him even though he was the one who published it and that, that, that all happened in the libertarian movement, too. Like, people spreading that picture and people spreading anything they could, you know, pictures of old Cantwell being fat and he's a fed, he's a fed, he's a fed. That's exactly what the left libertarian anti-white shit libs were doing to Cantwell. So you want to tow their fucking line? You want to jump in bed with the anti-white left libertarians against one of the most pro-white advocates, one of, one of the most pro-white activists in fucking America today? Fuck you. I'm standing with Cantwell. Where I, I guess it's where I am. Yeah. Oh well. I, I would uh, listen. I, what I would say to that would be like, I, I'm not throwing. I'm not. Gonna, you're not going to hear me throw shit at Cantwell either because Cantwell didn't start any of this. But I, I definitely would hope that he would back up a little bit and and, and look at Neilan and and you know, like you said, there's not a lot of good excuses he had for doxing this guy. Right. Uh, he, he didn't dox him as soon as he told him about the whole facial recognition thing. So it's hard for him to use that as justification for doing so. So, like, I think that Neilan is very suspicious at this point, honestly. Like like you said, he he, uh, he started that shit with Jared Taylor, and that was out of line. Jared Taylor didn't do anything to deserve what he got from Neilan. He just yeah, didn't. I don't, I don't disagree with you on so, that. that was, yeah, so, uh, just as like... I thought that was a bad look. And... Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. 
Oh, you're fine. So just just as suspicious as some of the people closer to the middle might be, and, and I would agree with you, they are because they just start a lot of shit. I would say that Neyland has started an equal, if not more, amount of shit at this point. So like, there has to be a, a, a middle view here, right? There's what I'm saying. I guess what is dangerous for us are these hard lines being drawn because whenever there's a hard line being drawn, it typically gets drawn in the space that was taking up the middle fucking view. So you have to take sides now. Now, not only are the leftists your fucking enemy, you've got enemies on the right. That is extremely dangerous, and that's what we need to not do. And uh, I just, I don't see anything that Chris has done to draw these lines. You know what I'm saying? I think he, him choosing whatever side he chose is a product of the people who drew them. I think to some extent they were drawn by anons in the comment section of forums and gab posts you know what i mean i think to some extent it's out of the hands of the chris cantwells and the paul neelands and even the even the mike enochs of the world right i mean i think our movement kind of has a mind of it of its own sometimes and we have to kind of be aware of that but we also have to be aware that some of the anons in the comments section aren't exactly on our side and that they're not they're not pro-white they're just trying to start shit so i Always am trying to encourage people, even Cantwell, to take the reasonable approach and look at things from all sides. And even myself, I reserve, I try to reserve judgment, man. I try not to pick sides. I still hold out. Uh, you know, I still, I still believe that the people at the Daily Stormer are operating for the most part in good faith. I think that people at TRS are operating most part for the in good faith. I think people want white people. I think most of us want the white race to continue existing, to continue thriving, for there to be a future for white kids. I don't automatically assume that people have the worst of intentions. And even if they did, it doesn't necessarily benefit me to highlight them. It doesn't necessarily benefit me to draw these hard lines in the sand on the right because for every second that I spend, even this now, even every second that I spend, every little bit of energy spent on that, trying to clear up these disagreements, these beefs, that we have is one less moment that I get to spend is that much less energy that I get to spend fighting our true enemy, which is the Jude and led anti-white left. Right. Yeah, no, I agree. I think that's the main point of, of like why we should even be talking about this or why I wanted to talk about it is because every second spent fighting with each other is a second. We're not progressing our views and our values and showing people what's going on here. And so it, it definitely needs to stop. And, and I know it's not just as easy as saying it needs to stop. I get that. But, like, uh, I think whatever side you're on, right, you need to look at both sides, okay? Because there's, there's retarded arguments to me being made on both sides. And I just don't see a world where we have to fucking be divided over these things. There's, there's good arguments and bad arguments on both sides here. And anybody encouraging a black and white view you don't need to accept that. You need to look into it yourself, and you need to actually figure out what you think about this shit. All right, because I think a lot of people have forgotten how to do that, and they, they've made heroes of some people, and they just listen to whatever they say. I'm fucking guilty of this. All right, I've, I'm guilty of this too, and sometimes it's hard to step away from that and really look at what's going on. Like in the beginning of this, I did not want to, uh, like, not the beginning of this, but whenever Neilan was throwing shit at Taylor. I didn't want to fucking fault Neilan for that. And then, you know, one of one of my friends, a guy that I look to as a as a mentor almost, he's not he, he's not known in this movement, but he is an extremely wise guy. He kind of explained it to me in, in a different way. And I'm like, well, fuck, now I feel stupid for just barking what I thought off the top of my head. When you think about things, you find that nothing is black and white. Absolutely nothing. And so if you're like, oh, fucking, you know, Neilan's fine. Doc's anybody to the left of you. You're going to fucking kill us. You're going to kill this movement. And I, I really hope it's worth it to you. Well, and like a lot of people, I think they have the heroes thing in this movement, right? And a lot of people become heroes for a lot of people. The movement can't well as a hero for a lot of people, you know, Mike Enoch's a hero for a lot of people. And that's, I think that's, you know, I think that's fine. I think the problem comes is when you let your heroes start to do your thinking for you. And I'm yeah. not saying that these are bad people and, or even that I'm not even necessarily saying that they're flawed in their perspectives, even though 
I'm sure they are. Everybody has flaws. I'm just saying that people have competing interests, right? And, you know, if you, if you, if you get sucked up in the personal interests of someone you respect because of their intellectual prowess and their ability to command arguments in favor of the white race, then I don't know, you might you might also get caught up in their conflict of interest, right? Rather than being focusing all your energy on just the continuation of the race and the survival of the nation. And, and then you start getting sidetracked. And then all of a sudden you're attacking people who are, you know, who largely have the same end goal as you more than you're attacking people that want you fucking dead. And it just doesn't make any sense. No, dude, I couldn't agree with you more. Like, I, there's only one... There's only one group of people who are surefire enemies of mine, 110%, and that's the fucking anti-white left, right? Everything else is just, it's shit that shouldn't be, like, it shouldn't be the forefront of our discussions. I mean, that, that's, that's just how it is. Even the Cernoviges and, like, the alt-light, like the uh, Paul Joseph Watsons and, and the Milos, maybe they'll disavow the harder alt-right and, like white identity and that stuff, but at the same time, they serve their purpose. They're still anti-immigration. Right. So it doesn't necessarily help me to let my time be monopolized attacking these people who are definitely to my left because they're pushing something that's further to the right than the status quo. And that's what you got to keep your eyes on is the status quo. Right. Because if you let that we've already let that get out of control. So if we're just going to fight each other over what the status quo should be, the status quo. It's going to keep it's going to keep drifting left. The Overton window is just going to keep drifting left. We were. We were most effective during the Trump campaign because that's when we were just like completely decentralized in our, I don't know, even just taking signals from each other, right? That was during the Trump campaign. You would see everybody from fucking Tom Woods in the libertarian movement to Andrew Anglin and Weave pushing the same message spontaneously without having to confer with each other. And it's because we all had a common enemy the anti-white left and maybe part of it's because we're not in an election cycle anymore and there's no you know the focus is kind of shifted off the common enemy and i don't know maybe we'll come back together during the next election so it always seems to happen right there was the buchanan revolution there was the ron paul revolution and there was the donald trump movement or whatever it was i don't think that's going to be the end of it even i don't think donald trump's going to get us everything we want He's not going to get us a white ethno nation. This isn't going to end here. This is going to keep continuing. So just going to be aware of these cycles and these off seasons where there's no, where there's no common enemy constantly being covered like Hillary Clinton during the 2016 election cycle. It's easy to let your creative energies be diverted toward attacking each other. And you've got to realize that the leftists know this and they're going to try to exacerbate that infighting. They're going to try to make you attack each other more and just not fall for it. Focus on them. Focus on the, on the Antifa. Focus on the fucking kikes. Focus on the anti-white white people, right? Like the people that you need to take your, you need them to take their own side. Like stop attacking people who already are pro-white stop attacking white nationalists stop attacking white supremacists if there's somebody that's deconstructing white identity though in your midst then it might be worthwhile to question that person i don't know maybe that's all i'm saying i've been kind of ranting for a while let's what what are your thoughts buddy <laughs> <laughs> no no i mean i i think i i agree with what you said there you know like uh we we, we know who the enemy should be and we know who it shouldn't be and then the, I think it's very important to keep your eyes on the people who are causing division in the movement. And if they're causing division, is it worth it? Right? Is it a valid thing to divide this movement, the one that is so important to all of us, the one that is supposed to fucking save our race? Right? If they're dividing the movement, it better be over a motherfucking good reason. Okay? So I think that's what you need to look at there. No, I... I wholeheartedly agree with you, man. And, and look, look, like I said before, like I'm a secessionist. I don't think that we're going to end up with one white American ethno nation after this. I think we're going to have like a fucking devastating blowout in the federal government. We're going to end up with at least as many different nations as there are states now, right? <clears throat> and a lot of those are already majority white. So, you know, you know, you might have a white state of. Maine, you might have a white state of New Hampshire. 
it doesn't necessarily hurt the movement to have a division between Maine and New Hampshire. You don't have to, you don't have to, at the end of the day, go home and retire to the same neighborhood as everybody else in the white nationalist movement. So maybe these molehills don't need to be made into mountains. Yeah, no, I agree, man. I totally agree. Well, look, I, I know you got to do some stuff with your fiance who, uh, who, uh, told, told Jared before, <laughs> before we went live, she said, he's, he's not, uh, well, what's that word? He's not very punctual. Yeah, yeah. And let me just tell you right now, Jira's fiance is not wrong. I am anything but fucking punctual. So I'm sorry for being late like this, man. I do apologize. That's oh, all good, dude. You know what? Thanks for having me, though. I really enjoyed this. I, uh, I hope that, I hope that you don't face any repercussions. I would hate for you to get kicked off a of TRS for talking to me about this. But uh, I, I have a lot of respect for you for doing so, and I, um, I enjoyed myself. It was uh, a pleasant experience. I, I'm I'm sorry that we didn't get a chance to speak sooner. Oh no, dude! I, I enjoyed it too, and I and don't worry. I don't think that I, I don't think they're gonna <laughs> I don't think they're gonna be mad at this discussion. I don't think they're those kind of people. So I think we're gonna be fine, man. It's all good. These are discussions that awesome. you know like need to be need to, they really need to be had. Well, hopefully, the, it's discussions like these are gonna mend some of these divides because I know we're gonna need it, especially in the future. <laughs> We had an election cycle this year, 2018, maybe not as big as the 2021 coming. The, 20, the 2021 coming is not going to be as big as the 2024 one coming, which is going to be the replacement of Trump. So I'm in it for the long haul. I know you are. Hopefully all the listeners are too. And hey, I know a lot of stuff that's been happening recently has been really blackpilling, but it's uh, it's just growing pains. We're going to get through it. Oh, yeah, I totally agree. I totally agree that we will get through it. And, uh, yeah, I guess until next time, man, like, thank you very much for coming on, man. I, I'm, I've am i been wanting to – I've actually been wanting to get you on for a while. Like, I emailed you before I ever had the show, you know, uh, back when Cantwell was in jail. And uh, I, I don't even remember what I was emailing you about, but but I've been listening to your stuff ever since then. I listened to the, the second episode, so to speak, and I've been listening ever since. And like I said in the beginning – you're uh I, I don't know many other people that can do a, a one-man show and make it you know extremely interesting but you do a great job of that and i would encourage everybody to check it out because it's a very well thought out show and like there's some there's extremely funny moments that come out of nowhere <laughs> you know you don't know you don't you don't think anything's about to be hilarious and then old jared will say something and it's fucking hilarious it's a joke in such a perfect time it just catches you by surprise or then my virus virus alarm will go off from some fucking malware page or something oh that's yeah, the it's... best that's the best shit dude <laughs> like yesterday it happened you were like you gotta be fucking kidding me and not just died out laughing <laughs> yeah man I'm, i sorry i missed that email you know what? i actually did it was a facebook message i didn't even see it till you messaged me to come on your show the other day like it was buried in my uh like spam message request box so sorry about that i think you were trying to have me cover something for uh uh for live from seg back november december while cantwell was still in jail i i wasn't ignoring you i, I swear to god it was no, just I know. Uh, I know you weren't dude it's fine it, it was uh for me it, it was that it was where that black woman makes the black baby yeah that's what i was trying to send you <laughs> <laughs> fucking clown world dude oh yeah but yeah man thanks again for having me we'll, we'll do this again sometime it was uh it's a lot of fun yeah, dude, that'd be great. That'd be great. I'll, I'll, we will, uh, we'll keep in touch for sure. And uh, tell your fiance once again that I'm sorry, and I hope that uh, I hope that I didn't fuck up y'all Saturday night. Ah, it'll be fine. Appreciate it, buddy. Take it easy. All right, man. You too. All right, guys. Well, that was Jared Howe, the uh, the host of So to Speak. On uh, for now, you know, right now I think he's he's syndicated at ChristopherCantwell.com and to DailyStormer.name. Uh, there might be some other places it's indicated, like I said, but I'm not, I'm just not, you know, I'm not sure of anywhere else. Now, there's something I wanted to go over with you guys. And that, of course, is the entire reason that uh, Joe is not here today. All right. Now, I'm not going to put some kind of fucking, uh, you know, political uh, media statement out here for you and bullshit you. I'm just going to tell you everything that happened. All right. And uh, from what I understand, Joe's made his fucking position of all this pretty clear. So I'm just going to give you my side of it. All right. Now, when uh, when Ricky Vaughn got doxxed, a couple hours after the news broke, I mean, I put up on Gab that I that I, I don't like Vaughn. 
I, uh, I was having, I was trying hard to stick to my principles here and all this and that. I said, but I don't feel bad for him. Now I can see how that's in bad taste. Okay. But what I said directly after that in the same exact post, a couple hours after it happened was, but I don't think Ricky Vaughn is one of our surefire enemies and doxing should only be reserved for, for, you know, those surefire enemies. I stick with that right now. I'm not positive. Like that Ricky Vaughn is not was not causing division on purpose. I'm not positive, but I'm anything but positive that he was. So doxing him was a shit move. And like I was saying to Jared earlier, like the fact that Neilan did this, it he single handedly caused one of the biggest divides in this movement that I have ever seen. And so Neilan is the fucking bad guy in this to me. Now, uh, having said that, right, you know, Joe, Joe thought that. I guess maybe since I wasn't as angry about Neil and doxing uh, Vaughn that he, as he was, because he was, uh, he was, I guess, righteously indignant, morally outraged. I wasn't like that, right? So he kept telling me that I was pro doxing and I was on Neilan's side. And I guess that since I didn't, oh, he, he wanted me to disavow Neilan. Well, I don't disavow anybody. That's a gay fucking word, and it is the word he want he used wanted me to disavow Neilan. I don't, I don't do that. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to fucking disavow anybody because that word is for fucking fags. But I will tell you, is Neilan, in my opinion now, is not to be trusted. Because you look at the Jared Taylor thing, right? And then you look at this. He single-handedly caused a couple of big divides here. And I think that is fucking suspicious. Which is my entire point. People who cause divides, to me, are suspicious. And Neilan did something that you can't take back. Which is makes to me it makes him the most fucking suspicious of any of the people that i was suspicious of all right so that has to be taken into account there neilan has has created a fucking uh he's created this thing you know th some people have taken and run with that oh well i'm not punching right if i'm punching uh people who are to the left of me that's bullshit y you fucking are punching right i mean you're punching within the right we don't do that. We can't do that. All right. And I guess I'm sorry. I got off topic a little bit here. But yeah. So that's why Joe quit the show. He, he quit the entire show because uh, he kept telling me that I was pro doxing. But the thing is, like, I can I can be anti this doxing and think it was horrible for the movement and, and still not like Vaughn. I mean, I'm sorry. I, maybe I maybe I should have liked Vaughn after this, but I still don't. That doesn't change the fact that I don't think he should have gotten doxed. And I, I mean, now, you know, now that some time's gone on and uh, what has he got fired now, I guess. Yeah, I hate that for him. I fucking hate it for him. I still don't like him, but he's not the fucking center of my venom. I'm not trying to spray my venom at the guy. It's just, it's pretty simple. It's always pretty simple to me. I can still not like the guy and uh, I cannot like the guy and still be fucking anti his doxing. I don't see how those two are uh, contrary to each other. They're just not. So I guess, you know, like I said, Joe took it, took, took the line that I was pro this doxing and he quit. I mean, but he's just wrong. And he said some of the, some of the worst shit to me that anybody in my entire fucking life has ever said things that you can't take back. I'm not about to fucking go over them here. They were just mean, fucking hateful shit. So no, I have no interest. I have no interest in fucking Joe coming back on the show. He'll never come back on the show. Uh, the show might end without him. I don't know. I'm not sure if he was why everybody was listening. I tend to think he wasn't. Because the couple of weeks that he wasn't here, uh, we got more downloads than any time he was here, including afterwards. So I'm 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 totally hoping that the show goes on. I uh, I've got a couple of people lined up that we're looking at to be the new co-hosts. And uh, if anybody has any suggestions, hell, that that'd be great. Fucking send them my way. I'll listen to anything. But my stance on this whole doxing thing, I just need to make it clear. I, I hope I've done an all right job of that. And like like Jared said, I hope you don't get kicked off TRS. Like, dude, I. I never even that never crossed my mind. I don't see how I how how they would. First of all, they're not those kind of people, right? These are not unreasonable people we're dealing with here. In fact, they're the only people that I trust 110 percent because they've never, in my experience, right? They've never fucking uh, got involved in something and been proven wrong. Okay, I kind of thought differently than they did about the whole TWP thing, right? And then they, and then all that shit happened. And then I found out afterwards some things that Heimbach was saying, like in that interview where he said, uh, you know, we want to fucking model ourselves af after, uh, what was that? Hezbollah. 
And then that speech I didn't know he gave where the flag in the background was like national socialism or death. These are all, I'm assuming, the reasons that they wanted to part ways with the guy. And how the fuck can you blame them? Those are insane positions, okay? But I think a lot of people thought that it was because of the color of their shirts, but it wasn't. So TRS, to me, has always remained neutral whenever they should have. And if they took sides in something, it was because it was a big fucking deal. And the only thing I've take, I've seen them take sides against here is kneeling, all right? And they barely even fucking thrown any shit at him. Just a couple of, like, little comments that I heard. But I think that if they're going to throw shit at Neyland, they're completely and totally right for doing so. Because he is, like I said, single fucking handedly. He has made sides um, with opposing views that could possibly lead to the, to the destruction of this entire fucking movement. Like I said, if this whole doxing thing catches off, you might as well fucking pack it up, guys. Go home. That's exactly what you might as well do. And that's what Neyland has done to us. All right. So I would hold him in far higher contempt. Then I would hold Ricky, Ricky Vaughn any fucking day of the week. I just got to be honest with you. Call me a fucking cuck or something if you want to, if that's what you think. But you can't deny that Neyland's actions here uh, are, are what has led to this fucking big divide we're seeing. And uh, as far as like, oh, well, I'm doxing him because of this facial recognition thing. Okay, well, who else did he fucking uh, try to help with that? He was trying to help you, Neyland. And you are a far-right candidate. You're one that we put a lot of fucking faith in. A lot of us had you on our shows and attached our names to your well-being and all this shit. Well, you've completely and totally fucked us now, right? You've sold us the fuck out, and you have helped divide this thing. And I, I fucking hate that guy for it. I, I'm going to be totally honest with you. It pisses me off just talking about it. So I guess that's really all I got to say on the whole Joe thing. He, uh, he quit because he thought I was pro-doxing, and he wouldn't fucking listen that I wasn't. And uh, I, I guess, to be fair, the reason he thought I was is because of a meme I shared on Gap. And it was right after all this happened. Uh, and it was like, it was a play on the, you know, fuck it Nazi time that Chris Cantwell does. And it was, uh, it kind of showed Ricky Vaughn in a bad light. I'll, gi I'll give you that. It really did. But I thought it mirrored my inner feelings about the whole thing, which is like, I still don't like Ricky Vaughn. And now this fucking guy, Paul Nealon, decided to dox him. I didn't really think much past that because it's kind of just what happened. Uh, some people thought that it lionized Paul Nealon. I guess I can see where that came from. I put it on Facebook, too. I deleted it after that was brought to my attention, you know. But for the purpose of making my views known here, fuck Paul Nealon. Okay, he, is, he has divided the movement, the only movement that's trying to fucking save the white race. And he can go suck a big fat dick for that. And, uh, yeah, as far like like Jared saying, you know, I hope you don't get kicked off TRS, I just... That kind of took me by surprise, to be honest with you. I don't, I, th I think that may be indicative that he views TRS a lot differently than I do. Um, I don't see, I don't know, man. I just, I don't think that's even in question. I don't think they're going to fucking kick me off for having him on. I don't see why they would. They're reasonable people. They're good people. Uh, I've never really talked to Sven. I've talked to him like one, one time on Jazz and Jesse. And then I messaged him on Facebook and he responded with a couple of words. So we're <laughs> We're anything from buddies. I can't say that I know for a fact they're going to be fine with whatever I'm doing here, but I don't see any implications where they've taken any kind of action before that wasn't warranted. You know what I'm saying? So anyways, yeah. Uh, I guess that's, I don't really know what else to say. Maybe I can take some questions from the chat. Uh, let's see. Didn't you start having channel problems after having Paul on the show? Yes, I did. Ice Age, as a matter of fact. Yeah, like a couple of days after that. Yeah. Wake says, Johnny, do you think Joe, my name is Jeff, by the way, Wake, uh, do you think Joe was just looking for a way out because it's all too much for him to do this anymore? Too much heat? It's, that's very, listen, that's very fucking possible. That is very, very, very possible. All right. Um, that is, that, that's actually something I didn't even think about. That, that could be it. I mean, for all I know, that could be it. Have I listened to the latest radical agenda with Hunter Wallace? I have listened to like maybe 45 minutes of it. And then I, I fucking passed out last night. I was really tired. And I'll listen to the rest of it today. I'm anything but on Neyland's side, all right? I think Cantwell's gotten wrapped up into this, uh, and I think he chose the wrong side. I'll just be fucking honest with you, but he didn't make the sides. That that was Neyland that made these sides, all right? So, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't fucking trust Neyland as far as I could throw him, and uh, I, I'm just, I, yeah, I'm really fucking pissed that he's done this to us. Uh, I have noticed that there is a more hardcore side to this movement and a softer side. I think the far right needs to understand some of us on the other, well, on the softer side need to disassociate. Well, dude, I, I just, like, I, listen, if you want to disassociate, that's one thing. That is completely and totally different 
from disavowing. Okay. I don't think that you have to throw shit at somebody to disassociate with them. That's fine. Just ignore them. There's nothing wrong with just ignoring people, right? Like that's kind of what Jared Taylor does. He just kind of ignores our arguments, but he doesn't fucking call us like Nazi racist. I don't see how that can't be just repeated by everybody else. But there, there of course is an extent that people can go to where you throw shade at them because they're not part of this movement anymore. And I would say that a perfect example of that is fucking Paul Nealon. Paul Nealon is a piece of garbage. Uh, he caused the he caused all this, man. I don't I don't know how, else, how how much more clearly I can say it. I don't blame anybody for this particular divide amongst this, this doxing thing than fucking Paul Nealon. Uh, what's my favorite sports ball team? I don't have one, dude. Fucking sports are gay. I mean, like, don't get me wrong. I was an athlete. I played sports my entire life, but I don't watch them. It's, I think they're just a distraction. You know, they're part of the bread and circuses that have got our fucking people so wrapped up in nothing. Uh, I think they're just dangerous and. I don't know. It's, I hesitate to call them degenerate, but the more niggers they let in there, of course, the more degenerate it's getting. So I don't have a favorite sports ball team. Do I own guns? What the fuck are you, a fed? I'm just kidding. Obviously, I own guns, dude. But to, to wrap up this whole Joe thing, right? Joe quit because he thought I was taking a stance that I don't take. Now, some of that might be my fault. right? Maybe I didn't clarify it enough. I, I definitely feel like I did, but I'm not saying 100% that that's correct. Maybe I didn't. I don't know. But Joe Joe rage quit pretty hard. He said a lot of shit to me that nobody's ever said. And so we will be going on. We will keep making content as long as you guys want to hear it. And uh, I'm really thankful for everybody that has been listening, who started listening way back in the day and who's still here. So I think that the main thing to take away from all this is it's just kind of sad that this whole division thing has, has affected the show. I mean, because it's not like this would have happened. Uh, if Paul Nealon didn't fucking dox Ricky Vaughn, all right? Paul Nealon is to blame for this specific division. I just really can't emphasize that enough. Paul Nealon fucked up. Paul Nealon can't come back from what he did. And I, I think that the people at TRS, all right, I think that them writing him off is the right move. I've never seen TRS write somebody off that didn't need to be written off. I also think that whenever you see people causing division, you need to look at the reason why, and you need to say, is this worth dividing the only movement that's trying to literally save the white race. And I don't know, man. I think a lot of the division that goes on is not worth it. And so you need to question where that came from. And you need to look in to see if that's happened from those same people before. But uh, as far as TRS goes, I haven't seen them create any division at all. Okay, I've seen them uh, sometimes take sides when somebody else calls division, like this whole Paul Nealon thing, and I think they took the right side. And frankly, I think that Cantwell has taken the wrong side on this. But I'm not, I'm not blaming Cantwell for this because even though I think he chose the wrong side, he didn't make the sides, all right? I think that Cantwell will come around. I think that Cantwell will, uh, will eventually figure out that uh, Neyland has, has fucked up here. He's really made this difficult for us because now there's a lot of people who think doxing somebody to the left of you is acceptable, which is, of course, not. It never will be. That's dangerous as fuck. So I guess in closing, be very wary of the people who are uh, trying to do things that cause division. All right. You don't need to engage in infighting. That's always been my stance. I think it's very dangerous. And I think that's what we all need to keep in the back or in the forefront of our minds going forward. We've got to realize that there's something bigger here than arguing over how the media covers us. OK, there's something bigger here than arguing over whether we should or not name the Jew. What's bigger is saving our fucking people. All right. And, and how we go about that, there can be ways that we disagree. That's fine. But to turn those disagreements into fights and draw lines in the sand and make sides over them is suicidal. We, we can't do that. I, I'm not going to take part in it, period. And the only time that you draw a line in the sand like that is when somebody does something to harm this movement that you can't come back from. And a good example of that would be fucking Paul Nealon, what he just did. So I, I would advise anybody not to fucking trust that guy. Uh, he stirred up a lot of fucking hornet's nests, first with Jared Taylor, now with this. Uh, and as far as the Jared Taylor thing, Paul Nealon bought a ticket to American Renaissance, all right? He was already going, and then Jerry Taylor, I guess, saw he was going, saw he was picking up steam, and he was like, hey, why don't you give a few words at the thing? And he's like, okay, sure. Well, Jerry Taylor is not somebody who names the Jew, but he also doesn't throw shit at us, so that makes him not an enemy, all right? He does not cause fighting. It doesn't matter what he does and doesn't decide to talk about. He is on our side, and he does good work. Anybody that would deny that is a fucking retard. And Neelan acted like because Jared Taylor disinvited him from speaking, not from the event, he still could have gone to the event, but from speaking that somehow Taylor had deplatformed him. That is a fucking stretch. 
and he took that stretch and he made hard lines in the sand once again. And a lot of people wrote Jared Taylor off because of that. You have to keep that in mind. That is not a good decision. Was him not speaking at American Renaissance worth a handful, a whole bunch of people thinking Jared Taylor is a piece of shit and then calling him that and then writing him off forever? No, that's that many more people who are just going to be out there talking shit about somebody who does great stuff. So that's a perfect example of where we have got to, whenever somebody does this shit, when somebody draws these hard lines, you need to say, okay, why are they drawing these lines? Is it worth it? And I think a lot of the times you're going to find the fucking answer is no, it's not worth it. So I guess that's all I've got. Uh, I look forward to your comments on TRS. You know, anybody that wants to email me, the email is johnnygaines at tutanota.com. Uh, you should, you'll find it in the description. I'll answer anybody's questions. I uh, look forward to engaging with you all. And I hope you have a good weekend. Take care.